Hello and welcome to Ms. Ma's Advanced Functions class. This is 5.3 Rational Functions in the form f of x equals ax plus b over cx plus d, or in other words, a line over a line. So we're going to be using the zero, the vertical asymptote, the y-intercept, and the horizontal asymptote in order to graph this rational function in particular. So let's get started. The zero um, happens when we have a numerator that is equal to zero because we know that um, y is equal to zero when we have zero over something, right? So the numerator will be equal to zero. In other words, ax plus b will be equal to zero. So this happens when x equals negative b over a. So those are all the zeros in this function, as in there's only one. A vertical asymptote happens when we have zero on the bottom, so something over zero. The denominator will be equal to zero. In this case, our denominator is cx plus d. So if we solve that, we get x equals negative d over c, and that is always the equation of the vertical asymptote. The y-intercept happens when x is equal to zero. So we're going to just set everything to be zero here, a times zero plus b over c times zero plus d, which ends up being b over d. So that is the y-intercept. Oops, it's supposed to be d. And the horizontal asymptote happens in the ends. So this is about end behavior. In other words, we want to know what happens when x is really big. Well, to do that, let's talk about it. Um, a times something really big plus b over c times something really big plus d. We know that if x is like really, really, really big, like in the millions big, then this if this is a 1 or 2, then it's going to be really insignificant. So if I had something like this, where we've got 3x minus 5 equals x plus 2. If x is really big, like x equals 1 million, for example, oops, how many, mil <laughs> how many zeros do I need? So I get this is going to be um, 3 million minus 5, and in the bottom it's going to be 1 million plus 2. So it's going to be these really, really big numbers plus you know, these really tiny numbers. So these numbers are sort of unimportant. So I really get 3 million over 1 million, right, practically. So I'm going to cross those out because they're so small they don't even really matter. That means I have a times a big number over c times a big number, and these are the same number. So I can actually cancel them out. So I actually get a over c, and that is the horizontal asymptote but we should always write our asymptotes as equations. So y equals a over c, that's the horizontal asymptote. In this case, you can see, well, I've got 3 million over 1 million, so my x's are going to cancel, so my y inter or sorry, my horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals 3, right? It, it's always just approaching it. It doesn't ever quite get there because of we have these little things on the ends, but it gets really, really, really close because those numbers are sort of insignificant in comparison to the millions. Okay, so we found the horizontal asymptote for this one. We're going to find the zero. The zero here is negative b over a, so 5 over 3. The uh, vertical asymptote is negative d over c, so negative 2, and always write the equation for an asymptote. And then we are going to do our y-intercept, which is going to be b over d, or negative 5 over 2. So now we can take these numbers and put them into our uh, Cartesian plane, and then we will be able to graph it. So this is x and this is y. I'm going to draw my vertical asymptote in first, because that's easiest. And we don't really have to be to scale very much because, you know, it's just a sketch. Um, I'm going to get my vertical asymptote is x equals negative 2. Did that. 0 is 5 over 3, so I'm going to draw that in there, 5 over 3. Um, my y-intercept is negative 5 over 2, so I don't know, somewhere down there, negative 5 over 2. And my horizontal asymptote is y equals 3, so I'll just draw that in there. You can see it's not to scale. That's okay. And if you want, you can always extend your um, extend your axes a little bit. This one is a little bit too short, so I'm going to make it longer over here, it's just so it's going to be a little bit more of a um, of a symmetrical graph. So now I'm just going to draw 
my graph in, so I know I have to go through these two points and I have to follow the asymptote downwards. So, and again, you could extend it further if you like. Actually, I think I will. Okay, there we go. So, we just want to go through those two points and we're going to follow along the asymptotes. So, we want to get along the asymptote and then get through our two points and then come back out to our the other side of our asymptote and just draw our arrows. And so if this is on this side, the way that you draw the rest of it is, is it's going to be on the opposite quadrant or this opposite side. Um, like it has odd symmetry if we pretend that this is the origin, but it's not. And so we'll just draw on the other side something really similar where it just hugs the asymptote on either side and you know it just sort of loops through here. And that's the best that we can do. So this is our graph and we'll label it f of x. So again, not forgetting to label our asymptotes and label our axes as well as our function. Okay. So I just want to remind you that there are actually three types of discontinuities. We just looked at the vertical asymptote. This is when the denominator is equal to zero. You could get a jump discontinuity, but that doesn't happen in these cases. Um, it only happens when we have a piecewise function, so we don't really have to worry about it for now, because we did piecewise functions a while ago. It's going to come back later, but not right now. A whole happens when we can cancel in the numerator and the denominator. So if you can cancel, then it's going to be a whole. Okay, and we're going to see a few of those. So here are the rules. If we have um, a vertical asymptote, it's going to be at x equals negative d over c. The horizontal asymptote happens at y equals a over c. The zero happens at negative b over a. A y-intercept at b over d. And we could get a whole. You can get a whole or a vertical asymptote. You can have both of them in this case. Um, a whole happens if ax plus b is a f multiple or a factor of cx plus d, so it's multiplied by cx plus d, and then we could cancel, right? So that's what happens, and then we get a whole at x equals negative d over c, okay? So that could happen, and it would replace the asymptote. Let's look at that, though. We'll do an example. So we're going to sketch these three. Uh, if you like, you can pause the video and try them on your own, uh, but I'm going to do them right now. So pause right now. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and do these. We need to, again, worry about our zero, our asymptote, vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptote, and y-intercept. So here our zero is, well, there is no zero. Um, and our vertical asymptote is at x equals 3. Our horizontal asymptote is at 0, because this is like 0x plus 2. And our y-intercept is 2 over negative 3. Okay, so we draw these in. y equals 0, just label it. And again, I'm labeling my, a my axes. And I'm going to put x equals 3 in here. y-intercept at 2, negative 3, so that's more right here. So this tells you which direction it's going to start. So you can see that I have to be down here below y equals 0 and hugging x equals 3. So, oh, and I should label that right there, so it's negative 2 over 3. And hug, oops, you want to draw a little bit more carefully, oops. So just try to hug the asymptote and then hug the asymptote. And then again, we're going to be on the opposite side, so go across and draw on the other side like this hugging the asymptotes on either side, and that's it. So that was f of x, label it. Next we have g of x. So again, we're going to do our zero, our vertical asymptote, our horizontal asymptote, and our y-intercept. So our zero is at two, our vertical asymptote, x equals negative four over three. Our horizontal asymptote is at one over three, y equals one over three, and our y-intercept is at uh, negative one-half, or negative two over four, but I'm just simplifying. So I'll draw my asymptotes in first, y equals one-third. You should make it as straight as possible. That wasn't very straight. Vertical asymptote at negative four over three. 
labeling it again. And then we're going to go through R0, which is at 2 here. Let's just draw 2. And our y-intercept is at negative 1 half. And again, hugging the asymptote, going through the points, and hugging the other side. And then going opposite, like across, and just drawing another, another side. And then label the whole thing. Okay? So our last one, you can see we've got x minus 3 over 2x minus 6. And this actually will cancel, so I'm going to get x minus 3 over 2 times x minus 6. Oh, sorry, x minus 3. Whoops. x minus 3, there you go. Cancel this, and you can see I get 1 half. Okay? So this is actually going to be the graph of uh, y equals 1 half with a hole at x equals 3, because that's what I canceled, right? So you just draw y equals 1 half and label it. And then we'll just draw our hole. So you can take your eraser, just trying to grab an eraser here, and go to y equals 3, or x equals 3. And then we'll just draw our hole. There we go. So make that 3. So there you go. And that's going to be h of x. Don't forget to label your x and your y. And that's it. So basically, we just learned these rules for the rational functions, and we use them to graph. I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching. See you in class.